Fantastic. Let me just switch across here. Okay, so you should all see my uh, my browser. And uh, I'm in uh, Chrome here. And this is the 360 Suite Home. And this is a, a demo site from Google. So you'll see the Google Holdings is the company name at the top. And I'm logged in as, as a standard user. So the 360 Suite offers this easy access to all your linked accounts. You log in, and you're going to see all the linked accounts you have. In this case, if we look at the Suite Home, only Analytics 360 is set up and linked. But from here, and I can't show you the admin, uh, you know, that uh, Google's not going to give us admin access to their, their Google Store, um, but there is an admin panel here for owners and administrators of the, the suite. And this allows you to link more of your accounts to the 360 suite, manage users and their access to the various products within the suite, as well as monitor hit counts and related billing data. So it's a great starting point where people can just log in to 360suite.google.com, and from there, you're ready to go. Now, uh, I want to dive into a few of the things that I discussed previously uh, related to some of the integrations and features within uh, GA360. The first one is a Double Click Campaign Manager. So if you link Double Click Campaign Manager, you'll get a specific set of reports. And the core inter in integration provides this DCM focused reports that break down similarly to how you might break down within DCM. These reports give you access to click click through and view through data. And, you know, they're a good start. But where I find the real power comes is when you start leveraging the DCM metrics and dimensions within other reports. So for example, you can see here within my secondary dimension, I have all these different dimensions that are available as part of the integration. And these are now available. Dimensions, metrics are available throughout the Google interface. And so you can start creating your custom reports and segments and secondary dimension breakdowns across all the other reports within the platform. So, you know, but where I said, you know, the real power comes from is within these other reports. And so I want to show you an example here. One of my favorites is really the DC, is to show the DCM integration is with the multi-channel uh, funnels and how GA360 can really help improve your understanding of the path to conversion. So in this example, I've filtered to paths that contain display advertising. You can see here I've jumped to the top conversion paths and I've got this uh, advanced filter on and really that's just so that I ensure I can show you some of the display paths. And you can see here that we've got display impressions. That will be with the, the eyeball and then we've got display clicks without the eyeball. And this is really now we're able to see where these appear in the overall path to conversion. And we can dig in deeper to look at what percentage of conversions contain an interaction with the display ad. So we can really start putting some thought against valuing display as part of our overall marketing strategy. Historically, if you just had DCM, you wouldn't actually get this view of the other channels that are driving towards conversion. So now we can really understand how well is our branded display uh, working for us, or any display in, for that matter. That's just one sample. And we'll, we'll see display come up as we jump through here, just because having the, the double-click integrations in place, you know, these, these tend to pop up. So one of the other uh, sort of features or tools I talked about was attribution modeling. Within Google Analytics Standard, you get access to the model comparison tool. And these are super powerful tools to get you started on a deeper st understanding of how to attribute credit to your marketing initials, uh, marketing initiatives. And as I mentioned, you know, in my opinion, this tool is extremely underutilized. And it's so powerful to be included for a free version of an analytics tool. You know, move beyond last click and, and start gaining a more complete understanding of where your various marketing initiatives are playing roles in driving conversions. With this tool, this can take some experimentation, but with a few clicks, you can gain some immediate insight. So, for example, you can see here that we are looking at last interaction. I've got my last interaction conversions of value. 
but I can create a pull down and we'll talk about data driven in a moment, but let's look at some of the other options. I have quite a few options and I can create my own custom models. But as an example, let's say, how does last compare to first? And so when you start looking right here, I look at things like, you know, organic search. And you could see that, you know, it's a little tilted towards being an opener versus a closer. Versus if I look at direct, I have quite a few more that act as closers. And that would make a lot of sense. Nobody's going to come direct to your website unless they already know about you. If you start seeing a huge, huge skew towards first interactions with direct, you more likely have a problem with some type of campaign tagging and, and other attribution issues that are going on with your website. But you can see as we go down here, we've got things like referrals and first and uh, organic that really are tilted more towards that first interaction versus last interaction. And these can, as you start playing and adding other models, you can start getting a feel for what point in that path to conversion do typically do these channels play. And, and I can break this down by other types of dimensions that are related to my, my marketing and advertising to start getting that deeper insight. Now, when you jump over to uh, Analytics 360, you get access to these two other tools. ROI analysis and Model Explorer. So let me jump to Model Explorer here quickly. Uh, Data Driven or DDA, it evaluates all converting and non-converting paths to understand what role each channel plays in driving conversions. And it's then able to put weights around those, as I mentioned previously. So in this case, we can see that, what is it here? Let's see, we've got display, referral, direct and, and even organic search are skewed towards the end of the path and are acting as closers to your conversions. You know, these models are, are refreshed day, uh, weekly, so they really stay up to date with your changing marketing efforts. Now, the key to successful use of DDA or data-driven attribution is to ensure you're capturing all associated information related to your campaign. So, you do want to make sure that you've got those governance and standards in place to have, you know, all your Google campaigns are, are linked and auto-tagged and your non-Google campaigns are all campaign tagged. DDA will also incorporate cost data. So it's worthwhile to look at leveraging cost data import and pulling in cost data from your non-Google campaigns. Typically, you're able to automate the pull-in of cost data for many of your Google campaigns. Uh, DDA, data-driven attribution, does have a few limitations that you want to be aware of uh, when you're kicking it off. You know, each conversion type within the last 28 days should have 400 conversions uh, with a path length of two or more interactions. And in the selected reporting view, you want to have about, you know, 10,000 different paths for it to, to look at, which is typically 10,000 or less users, because some users may generate multiple paths. But as long as you're within those, and most larger uh, 360 organizations are, uh, you're able to you know, really leverage the power here that comes from the, the uh, model explorer. ROI analysis, as I mentioned, is one of the others that leverages data-driven attribution. Uh, actually, let me just jump back here for a sec. Uh, no, it is this one. So model explorer, we'll just wait while it jumps back up. Um, is, you know, you're able to analyze campaign ROI across different attribution models. So it will default to data-driven, but you can play with it and, and have it on other models or even the custom models that you've built out. And really, it's going to look at, by comparing, considering spend and revenue metrics from GA, it'll help you really get a better understanding of which channels are driving revenue so that you can start experimenting with shifts in ad spend. And it's doing this based on the model that you've put together. The last couple of things I wanted to talk about, we did spend a bunch of time talking about, you know, sampling, unsampled reports, things like that. I, I want to show you just uh, how easy it is to, to act, act on some of these things. So this account doesn't necessarily have enough data to, to set up for sampling. But if you did have a complex uh, report that you've created and you have a large amount of data, 
requesting that unsampled data is really simple. Under the export menu, you're able to pull this unsampled report. And this actually gets pushed to Google Drive, and you can access it right from within here under the customization menu, where you have unsampled reports, or right from within your Google Drive. Uh, they can take a little bit of time to process, but uh, you'll get an alert when it's ready. Additionally, I wanted to show you custom tables. So as I mentioned previously, all standard reports in GA and GA360 are pre-aggregated on a daily basis. So they come up quickly, they're not sampled, um, and if you leave the reports at their default, you should never see sampling. But as soon as you want to do some of these ad hoc requests on a large account, you may find that sampling takes effect. So custom ta tables allows you to mimic the ability of the standard reports with your own custom reports so that you can minimize the times uh, you need to request an unsampled report and slow down your analysis process. You know, with custom tables, it just allows you to keep moving along. So they're created through the admin area. And you'll see here, I'm actually under the, the web property management area in the admin. And I've created just a very random, random set of dimensions and metrics here. But, you know, once you log in and you create this, it needs a little bit of time to do its processing. So give it 24 or even up to 48 hours the very first time. But once it comes in, it will give you a, a report here that's showing me when I created it, how far back it's gone. So it will go back 30 days. I only just uh, built this yesterday as an example. And now this specific report is available basically under my custom report menu here, custom tables menu. And it's just like a, a standard custom report. If I click on it, I can come in and it will pull up the report. Now you see there is, the processing hasn't completed on here yet. Let's, there we go. Uh, but you're gonna have a standard report that shows up right here that you can then actually access very quickly and easily every time. You can potentially even use your, your bookmarks, you know, so you can get a shortcut and, and access that very quickly. 